Welcome everybody to a new post in the TFRP group with Avi Tenenbaum. And this week we have an important post that will shut down one of the biggest rationalizations that all of us human beings make every day. You'll have interesting things to talk about at the end of this. A lot of people blog about this idea, hack, talk, schmooze about this idea. And let's jump right in. So the Gemara says in Brachos and Dav Samech Aleph Amr Aleph that the Yetzir Hara is like a fly. And that's an interesting thing to say. Why is the Yetzir Hara like a fly? Why not like a baboon or a goldfish? So the Vilna Gon says in the Sefer Evan Shrema, incredible Sefer, you got to get it, Evan Shrema. He says in Evan Shrema in the fourth chapter that flies are attracted to open wounds. And this is true even today if you look up the science about flies or if you live with flies. Flies love open wounds. So just like there is already an open wound in the fly, instead of zeroing in on any other place that he can sit down and eat from, he sits down on a person's open wound, or he sits on something spoiled, something that's not good. So so too the Yetzir Hara, he doesn't just jump a guy and beat him up and take away his free will and mug him in that way. He waits for the person to first make their own poor choices on their own. And, you know, I think there's a big misunderstanding in the world about what the Yetzir Hara is. The Yetzir Hara is the urges that we have, the fantasies, the temptations, uh, the confusions that we have. You know, but sometimes we make bad choices not only because of the Yetzir Hara, but because we decide we're just going to dip in a little bit. And we didn't need the Yetzir Hara's help to trick us and push us into making a bad choice. And you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we're just in a devious mood, and we just want to enjoy a little bit of something forbidden. And we don't need the Yetzir Hara to force us into that. That's something foolish that we do on our own. And we say things all the time like this. We say, oh, I'll just eat a little bit unhealthy today, or I'll just peek at some bad things in the internet just one time, or, you know, just this one time I'm going to go to this place that I'm not supposed to and do this type of thing. You know, and we're always dipping in and allowing ourselves to kind of get away with things that we know we shouldn't, that we don't really hold of ourselves. And so the Yetzir Hara is like a fly. He's waiting for us to make some small, poor choices. And that's like an open wound. That's like something spoiled. And then the fly, the Yetzir Hara, is going to come fly onto us and sit down there and start working on us. And this is how addiction works. And this is how people lose their free will. They find themselves making some small poor choices in the beginning, and you didn't need the Yetzir Hara to overpower you in, in that scenario. It's a poor choice that you made on your own, and then by making one poor choice and a second one and a third one, before you know it, it becomes uh, overpowering, and we become entangled in temptation, and before you know it, we lose our ability to choose, and we lose our free will. And the villain of says, you know, people say, oh, look at me, poor me, poor me, I got no free will, I'm addicted, there's nothing I can do about it, it's not my fault. But it's just not true because you made those poor choices in the beginning, those small, seemingly, you know, um, innocuous choices in the beginning that led you to this place. You thought you can get away with those, you thought that you're not going to have to pay for those in the end. Crime pays, right? When I grew up there was the saying, crime doesn't pay. Right? So you thought crime pays, I'll just dip in a little bit today and a little bit tomorrow and five minutes here and five minutes there. But guess what? In the end, it catches up to us, and it ends up robbing us from our free will. And that's how we end up losing our ability to choose, and it's our fault, and it's our responsibility. That's what the villain of is talking about. And so he says a person can find themselves in a situation where they don't have any more ability, barely, to choose, and it's still their fault, and they're held accountable because they put themselves in that situation. So that's the villain of some very powerful ideas. If you look in the Sefer Nave of Vigdor on page 144, from Rebbe Vigdor Miller. He says this idea too, amazing chapter there about free will, and he says, you absolutely have to guard your ability to choose. We are human beings, we're not animals that live by instinct, and we're not angels that work like robots, we're human beings. The godly part of who we are is that we, we are able to choose, we can make good choices, bad choices. We had a great TFRP special episode recently about suicide, and the whole end of that video, the whole last hour, is all about the Tzalem el and the greatness of our ability to choose. You can make choices in life, good choices, bad choices. So Rabbi Victor Miller says, you absolutely have to guard your ability to choose, because you can lose that ability, and it's going to be your fault. 
It's like imagine that you're guarding something very, very expensive and precious that keeps you alive, and you're going to post guards there 24 hours a day to make sure that the enemy doesn't get in there, doesn't steal it, doesn't sabotage it, doesn't take it away. So our mind is what is helpful for us to make good choices. If we don't keep our mind well-maintained and healthy, uh, and if we consume garbage, bad stuff in our minds, and we end up losing our ability to make good choices, we end up impairing our judgment, and now, before you know it, we say, look at me, poor me, I can't make a good choice. That's our fault. We should have guarded ourselves in the beginning and not dipped in that first little time and the second little time and the third little time. So, I wish everyone a beautiful week. We should make great choices, but not only great big choices, but we should realize that our ability to make choices at all is dependent on us making good, tiny choices every single day in the most non-dramatic way. Everyone should have a beautiful week. Call Tooth.